Hi, I'm Andy and welcome to a WatchCrave video. Today, we will be having a look at the Proxima PX1697, a skin diver of sorts. I got this watch during the AliExpress November sales last year. I actually had my eyes on it for more than a year but finally committed to the purchase last year. The watch has been around for a few years now, it is a homage, and based on my Google searches, I believe it to be a crossover of an older Christopher Ward C65 Trident and C65 Aquitaine. Here are the two watches as reference, what do you think? Anyway, there are currently three main versions of this watch, a white version along with a black version. There are also a few more variations with a different logo and dial. You can also choose to go with a steel bracelet or a rubber strap. I highly recommend going for the steel bracelet, it's worth it. The one we have here today is the white version with a steel bracelet. In terms of price, Proxima is currently asking for 250 to 270 US dollars for this watch. It's a bit cheaper if you go with the rubber strap option. There's also an option to upgrade to a Swiss SW200 movement. You can purchase the watch from either Proxima official AliExpress store, their website or other distributors. As I always say with AliExpress watches, if you want one, wait until one of the big sales to make your money's worth. For the packaging, it's your standard AliExpress combo. We have a Pelican case, warranty card, manual and tools for resizing the bracelet. Now with all of that out of the way, let's get into the watch. The watch has a diameter of 39mm, it is only 11.5mm thick thanks to the thinner movement. The lug width is 20mm, the best and most common lug width in my opinion. The lug to lug measures at 45.5mm, making this watch very wearable for smaller wrist sizes. For the watch glass, we have a double dome sapphire crystal with clear AR coating. The water resistant is rated at 200 meters. Proxima as a brand is on a higher tier of the AliExpress watch world, so I would believe the rating to be somewhat accurate. I reckon it should be fine if you were to take it for a swim. With a few links removed to fit my 6.2 inch wrist, the watch weights in at 123 grams. It's surprisingly lighter than a lot of other steel watches I have. As for the movement, this watch is running with a PT5000 movement. Do note that you also have the option of upgrading to a more expensive SW200 movement. Both of these movements are clones of a popular ETA 2824 movement that is often used for entry and mid-level Swiss watches, with the difference of the PT5000 being Chinese made and the SW200 being Swiss made. The PT5000 is a high beat movement beating at 4Hz or 28,800 beats per hour. This means that the second hand will take quite a few times between one second mark to the other, resulting in a smoother second hand sweep overall. The movement features a date complication, it also hacks and hand wind, and has a power reserve of 38 hours. In terms of accuracy, the PT5000 claims to have an accuracy of minus to plus 12 seconds per day. This particular watch has an accuracy of plus 6 seconds per day, which is pretty good in my book. Next up, let's have a closer look at the watch. For the case, we have a stainless steel case that is brush finish on the top. The flanks are divided into two, a brush finish part that curves upward to match the top, and a polished part that curves downward to the bottom of the case. Thanks to this downward curve, the watch has no sharp edges and is quite comfortable on the wrist. The lugs are brush finished on both tops and sides and have been rounded out all the way to the bottom. Once again, no sharp point or edges. Onto the back of the case, we have a screw down case back that is polished on the outer perimeter. The central part is brush finished and is laser engraved with two manta rays and some decorative text. As for the crown, we have a coin edge style crown that's easy to grip and operate. Winding, locking and unlocking feels very smooth. It's definitely one of the better crowns I've played with. The crown is unsigned however. Onto the bezel, we have a 120 clicks unidirectional rotating bezel. The bezel is quite thin and the knurling is done in a coin edge style. It's also not flat but has a pretty nice bevel to it. The bezel insert is made of ceramic, it's also bevel and is quite thin. The markers on the insert have been filled with BGW9 loom. Unfortunately, there is a tiny bezel insert misalignment on this particular watch. It's only by 0.1mm though, so not a major issue. On a positive note, the bezel action is very smooth and responsive, and there's pretty much no backplay whatsoever. For the bracelet, we have a 3 link stainless steel bracelet that is brush finish on the top and sides. The inlinks are female inlinks, so combining with the short lug to lug, this watch is very suitable for those with small wrists. The bracelet has a very good range of articulation and tapers from 20mm down to 16mm. All links are connected tightly via screws. Proxima also provides not one but two short links with the bracelet, so no one should have any issues with getting the perfect fit. 
I almost forgot to mention that the bracelet also has quick release mechanism, meaning that you can simply remove it without the needs of a spring bar tool. This was rather unexpected and is definitely a plus point for this watch. For the clasp, we have a mill button push clasp, the top and flanks are brush finish, and there's a polished chamfered edge in between. The clasp is unsigned, but the inner part is signed. There are four micro adjustment holes. Recently, I believe Proxima has replaced this clasp with a new one that has the on the ply adjustment. Onto the dial, we have a beautiful enamel dial. The indices are applied and filled with a good amount of BGW9 loom. They are also exceptionally well finished. To be honest, the dial on this watch looks like it should be on a watch on a much higher price point. Below the 12 o'clock, we have a laser printed Proxima logo. Above the 6 o'clock, we have a bevel date window. And above that, a similarly printed automatic text. Around the edge of the dial, there's a laser printed chapter ring. The dial diameter is also a little bit bigger than a lot of skin divers out there, so it will fit bigger wrists nicely as well despite the smaller case size. For the hands, we have a couple of pedal style hands for the hour and minute, and a lollipop style second hand. The pedal hands are brush finished, while the lollipop hand is polished. All the hands are filled with BGW9 loom. One thing to note is that the loom colors on the hands do not quite match with the indices. Personally, I would have preferred that they were the same. As for the loom, this watch has loom on both the dial and bezel. The looms are bright and last for quite a long time. It's actually much better than my expectation, and it's perhaps better than a lot of the other watches I've reviewed. So, how does it fit? Well, with a lug to lug of 45.5mm and female end links, it's a great fit for my small 6.2 inch wrist. I have to say that this is, no doubt, the most comfortable AliExpress watch I've reviewed so far. As soon as I sized the bracelet and put it on my wrist, it felt just right. The lighter weight of the bracelet, combined with the curved edges of the case, definitely helps with that amazing comfort. The thickness is only 11.5mm as well, so the watch should have no problem slipping under a tight shirt's cuff. So, what are my thoughts about this watch? Well, the watch has a lot going for it. It has an amazing and well finished dial, a beautifully finished case that is well proportioned, thin and has no sharp edges, a very nice and lightweight bracelet that comes with not one but two half links, and also quick release spring bars, a well executed bezel that's loom, double dome sapphire crystal, and an amazing feel of comfort on the wrist. It's definitely worth the asking price, and probably punches up well above it. For the cons, I only have a few small things I don't like. More like nitpicking, I suppose. The biggest nitpick I have is the color mismatch for the hands and indices. It may be subjective, but I like my hands and indices to have matching colors. I also give the watch a minus point for the tiny bezel misalignment, and another minus for the font on the date wheel, as it doesn't match with the font used for the logo or the bezel insert. If Proxima can improve on these small issues, I think this would be a perfect watch. And that brings us to the end of this video. What do you think about this watch? Are you interested in getting your hands on one? If you already got one, what are your thoughts about the watch? Feel free to drop a comment down below and let us know. I hope this video helped you in some ways. If you find it enjoyable or helpful, please drop a like and subscribe for future videos. As a growing channel, I really appreciate your support. Until next time!